When we travel, all of us bring along our own preconceptions from home. I've come to Tokyo to experience edible traditions that challenge my Western norms and the taboos of home. This is an opportunity to challenge my own ideas and beliefs about what is food. We've all been there. You look at a plate of food and some kind of primal instinct kicks in. There's no way you can bring yourself to taste it, let alone eat it. Fear of food takes many forms for many reasons. And even with my, shall we say, enlightened approach to food, I'm just as susceptible as anyone to my food fears. Good morning. Thank you. I thought it'd be fun to start this day with a traditional Japanese breakfast. Push the envelope a little bit. Not that far, though. I mean, these are all familiar savory flavors that we normally associate with dinner. Shrimp, sea bass, rice, vegetables, savory miso broth. Everything's pretty familiar to me. So I guess fear is sometimes a reaction not to what we eat, but when we choose to eat it. All of this is really just a warm-up, though, because tonight at 7 p.m., I come face-to-face -face with the biggest fear of all, death. So I thought it might be a good idea between now and then to perhaps loosen up a bit and see just how much fear I can get rid of. Asking around, and apparently just up ahead is a neighborhood that's known for its street food. It is off the beaten track, which means no tourists and plenty of. Well, I don't really know what I might find. Hi. What is it? <laughs> Wait a minute, I know what that is. Hi. <laughs> These are crickets. Nice. <laughs> First time. It's crunchy. It's very nice. Very nice. Okay. I'm gonna have another one. These crickets have somehow been soaked in a candy solution. They're actually kind of good. Man, you really do have to have an open mind in a place like this. I've got to get some candied crickets and take them home. Thank you. Don't worry, got to. Hello. What is this? Slangi. Slangi? Eel. Eel. Ah, this I gotta try. Eel. Clearly being cooked over some kind of wood charcoal. I, I, I can't smell any particular type. And then I think back over there is some kind of barbecue glaze that the eel is getting. Three. Four. Four. Okay. Nineteen. Hi, hi. Thank you. Okay. Hi, hi. Thank you. Have a day. Mm. Boy, oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, this is almost a bit of a taboo in the West, mainly because eel looks like a snake. But really, all it is is a nice, long fish. And that, I don't know what that is. I have no idea what I'm looking at. Oh, gosh, look at that. That's, yeah, that's some kind of roe or something. That's totally what it is. Actually, maybe it's eel liver. In fact, I'm not sure, but it tastes good. Lakkyo. 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 Kurozu lakkyo. Good. Pickle, yes, very good. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, when you're traveling and you spot a street like this, at first glance, it can seem a little bit intimidating. But all you have to do is just go for a stroll, and you'll quickly realize that, well, you don't have to fully understand the language or fully understand the culture to feel welcome. Say, cheese. <laughs> to go home with a bag of memories like this. But as cool as this is, I still feel like a bit of a spectator, almost like an outsider looking in. I want to go a bit deeper, which means I'm going to need a local on my side. As a chef, I've come to Japan to challenge my Western perspective about food. I began with a few baby steps in a neighborhood market, which really just whet my appetite for more. To dig deeper, I found someone who knows the ins and outs of Tokyo. Shinji? Oh, the Michael? Yes. 
Good to meet you. I'm really looking forward to this. Who do you write for? I write for the Gourmet Magazine. Shinji is an international food journalist. He's traveled and written about food all over the world. I don't want to go where tourists go, and Shinji knows the way. So this is the place? Fish restaurant? What? You find out inside. So let's get in. Let me get a picture though. Do you want to grab him? Do I want to grab him? Yeah. Where? By the neck? Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So don't let him bite you. Right, yeah. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I'm not yeah. so comfortable right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. I've heard about turtle restaurants, but they're hard to find, even for the Japanese. They're much yeah. revered here. Oh. These are farm-raised turtles, but they still have a bit of a wild streak. Oh, yeah. You just grab them? Yeah, right up. Right up. Yes, yes. Oh, oh no. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little freaked oh, out. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about fear. I think that in the West, we're so distant from living, breathing food. Mm -hmm. To be confronted with anything that's alive, this is way beyond what I'm used to. He's going to f***ing bite me, yeah? How many fingers? Let me see all your fingers. Five. Oh, see? See this? This is a problem for me. I think so. You got it? Okay. All right. Took two of us. Now it gets serious. Saki and turtle blood? Yep, bottoms up. Oh, I need a second. Yeah. I need a second. This isn't going down either. Thank you. This makes me strong? Yeah, makes you strong. Strong like... Yeah. Strong? <sighs> oh, thank God there's no flavor there except the sake. <laughs> I can't okay. believe I just drank turtle blood. <laughs> People believe, you know, if you have the life force inside of your body, you get another life force. So yeah. I now have yeah. my own life force plus the life but force of a turtle. turtle. You know, at this point, this is actually pretty easy. You know, really, this is just like breaking down a chicken, and I've done it a million times before. Yeah, yeah. this is the heart. That's the heart? Yeah. Look at that. It's still, yeah. still got some life in it. Yeah. I mean, I guess I knew some people somewhere eat turtle, but... A restaurant that specializes in turtle? It's a delicacy, you know. It's very generous to show us, you know, everything. So here's the turtle broth. Yeah. Oh. That's really good. Mm -hmm. And I hate to say it this way, but it's true. It tastes like chicken. Yeah. This is the collagen that's this in is the, the collagen. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh. very strong. Look yeah. at that. Yeah. As yeah. the broth gets colder, it yeah. congeals. Yeah. Much the same way a chicken broth yeah. would congeal. And Tomorrow morning, you touch your face. You feel the difference. Well, because this yeah. has so much yeah. collagen in it. Exactly. Right, which yeah. is very good for the yeah. skin. Once it's you understand the yeah. benefits of it, mm -hmm. that helps yeah. you get over your fear. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay, this has certainly been a day of first. But after drinking turtle's blood, I'm sure I can handle a little turtle meat. Would you like to try sperm sack? Sperm sack? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> it's funny, more often than not, the things that we're afraid of, once you get them in your mouth, there's nothing there. You're not only tasting by your tongue, you also taste it by your brain, too. Of course. That's where our fear comes from. Not yeah. because we know what it is, but because of all these things we think we know. Oh, there's a big chunk of turtle meat right there. As I'm eating this, what I'm looking for is flavor and texture and the, and the aromatic qualities, the things that I normally look for in food. But it's turtle. There's more to it than just the flavor and the taste. There's a tradition here, and there are certain medicinal qualities that are attached to this. And that's what's opening my mind, if you will, and that's what's helping me understand why would you eat turtle to begin with. Thank you. So, 
He's now 62. Do, do you think he looks like 62? No, no, no. So a turtle a day keeps the doctor away. Look at his face. He's been doing for 40 years. Just here. Yeah, yeah. I'm fascinated by it. It's, it's, there's a respect between you and the ingredient that just happens, and, and somehow it translates into what the guest experiences. It's not every day the opportunity arises to face down some of your fears, and you never know what's around the next corner. That was amazing. Talk about a culinary adventure. I've come to Tokyo to explore the fear of food, and let's just say I've hit the mother load from an unexpected breakfast to unfamiliar street food, including crunchy candy crickets, to the taboo of fresh blood from a fresh turtle. And I do mean fresh. Shinji takes me to an average lunch shop, an everyday sushi bar. So this would just be a sort of an average neighborhood lunch spot. What's that? Apparently Shinji has ordered a traditional lunch for me, but in Japanese, so I'm not exactly sure what's going to come out of that kitchen. We begin with one of my favorites, sushi. This is one of my favorite things about eating sushi. It's all the colors and the, it looks so vibrant and fresh and interesting. One thing that I'm never quite sure of is when to use my chopsticks and all of the sort of etiquette that goes mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. What's the worst thing I could do right now? The most food chef, you know, like hate is like, you know, you put too much soy sauce. Oh, don't ruin my, you know, sashimi. You know. I completely yeah. understand that. Mm -hmm. that. I mean, that's like yeah. making this beautiful plate of food yeah. and then mm -hmm. watching somebody drench it with yeah. ketchup. What about uh, our chopsticks? chopsticks yeah. is, the worst is, thing you can do is like you leave your chopsticks into the rice and leave it. So just by leaving them like that, yeah. I'm offending? Yeah. You're offending, yes. Really? Yes. What if I don't like something here? Uh, well, yeah, then what do I do? Then it's your fault, you know, you didn't tell the chef beforehand. You know. uh, in other words, Another suck word. it up. Suck it up. Eat it. Mm -hmm. No matter what happens, mm -hmm. I don't want to offend the chef. So right. I'll do what it takes, I guess okay. is what I'm saying. This this fish here, this sashimi yeah. came from that fish? Yes. And you this is traditional? It's old school. How many times am I going to say on this trip, I've never done this before? <laughs> it's wonderful. There's no question, it's fresh. Ever since I got here, I've been looking at Japanese food through Western eyes. But what if we look at Western food through Japanese eyes? They definitely get one of those. Okay. And then it's uh, fries. French fries, yeah. I know a good burger. Look at that. So how are you supposed to eat this? Just sort of... That's, you know. So it really is a rice yeah. cake. Rice cake, yeah. With meat in the middle. Yeah, yeah. so really it's an yeah. attempt to yeah. add a Japanese... Yeah flair to yeah. a Western concept, I guess. Exactly, exactly, yeah. This has got to be the strangest hamburger I've ever oh. eaten. Okay, I see you at 7. Make sure you'll be there. Don't worry, I'll be there. I can't believe all the fears I face today in Tokyo, but really, so far they've just been an appetizer. Because next on the menu is the biggest single culinary challenge of my life. Literally. So this is it, eh? This is it. Here we go. As a chef, I've always prided myself on having an open mind, even more so after today. And I've always said that given the chance, I would leap at the opportunity to try one of the most unique and exotic foods I've ever heard of. Call it Japanese roulette, fugu, the deadly blowfish. Which, by the way, if it's prepared incorrectly, it can kill you long before dessert arrives. And there it is. This is the blowfish. Mm. 
And of course, we're in the single most famous fugu restaurant in all of Tokyo. This is the one. This is the one. I came to Tokyo because of this blowfish. But I have to admit, now that I'm here and I'm staring at it, it's a little scary, to put it bluntly. Certain part of the body, you just take it out, and then the rest is okay. Yeah, yeah, he's making it sound easy. Yeah. But I don't know how to do it. I just know what I've heard and what I've read, and I just know that this one fish could kill 50 people, so... But, At the moment, forgive me for being just a little bit nervous. Of course. I was a bit uneasy to see the master simply looking on while his apprentice prepared my first taste of fugu, because it takes 10 years of training to learn how to handle this fish. In fact, it's so dangerous that a chef needs a license just to serve it. I, I literally, I didn't expect this. I mean, I knew that the toxins were in the internal organs, but I didn't expect to see the chef sort of poking them and ripping his way through the fish just the same way I would if I was butchering a fish. I mean, I trust him, of course I trust him, but I'm still looking at, you know, the potential of death right in front of me. It's, it's... No problem. No problem. Look at this. Yeah. The liver and skin contain deadly neurotoxins that paralyze and kill. Every part of the fish that's not eaten must be contained and secured. A lock on it, a chain, okay. and this is deadly serious stuff, no pun intended. Otherwise, you know, you can kill somebody. Because this is hazardous waste. Yes. Of course. Eating fugu goes beyond taste into a more surreal world. It's a rite of passage for anyone seeking a culinary adventure on the razor's edge. Chives. Chives. Okay. Shift fast. If it was just me, no big deal. You know what I'm thinking about right now? Mm -hmm. My family. Okay. I didn't think this was going to be that hard. I've been looking forward to this actually. I didn't come all the way here to just look at it. I came here to try it. Okay. Yeah. Mm. It's really good. It's actually the flavor of the fish is very neutral. I mean, it's not bad. It's not good. It just is. The texture of it is. Um, Stronger than I thought it would be. You should try it. You know what? I, I'm actually getting a little tingling on my lip. Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? No, it's it's a, you know takes a few hours. I need a beer. <laughs> The very best fugu chefs actually leave in just enough toxin to let you know that you've been poisoned, but not enough to kill you. It's at that moment when you don't know for sure whether you'll live or die that guests pay a premium price to experience. Is this the uh, sperm sack? Just eat it. It's like a big piece of caviar. Yeah. The inside pops and pops. you get this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're talking about a yeah. sperm sack here, yeah. so yeah. forgive me. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers for you. <laughs> I did it. You feel like you've cheated death. It doesn't really matter what it tastes like. It just feels good. And I think that's what this is all about. And it's just food. Don't want. I came to Tokyo to challenge myself, to go beyond my preconceptions about food, to explore the relationship between food and fear. Fear is one of the single most powerful emotions there is. It can get your adrenaline surging. It can stop you dead in your tracks. Fear can keep you from eating your dinner. But when you overcome your fear, when you challenge your fears, there's no other feeling like it in the world. I mean, put it this way. I feel alive. And does it ever feel good? Come by. Come by.